In this capture, we're going to take a look at heparin infusions and how to calculate them and how to manage them. So heparin is an anticoagulant and it can be administered subcutaneous or intravenously. We are going to focus on IV administration. It's important to understand that heparin is a high alert medication and it needs to be adjusted per a standard protocol, typically facility based. Any adjustments need to be verified by two nurses. Typically your EHR system when you're documenting this is going to require a co-signature. So IV heparin is used to achieve quick results because we get it directly into the systemic circulation. It has a very uh, short onset of action. Okay, So we're going to be looking at this in two ways. We have a bolus which is a quick administration of a higher dose to kind of get things jump started. This is given IV push. So we pull it up into a syringe, connect it to the patient's IV and directly push it into the line. Then we have an infusion. This is a lower dose continuous infusion and this is to achieve and maintain anticoagulation. This is always given on an IV pump. Heparin should never, ever, ever be running via gravity. So the dose of heparin your patient's going to get is going to be titrated up or down depending on certain lab results. Depending on your facility, they may use PTT, APTT, or unfractionated 10A levels to show how anticoagulated the client actually is. And based on the numbers that you get, we'll adjust the dosing up or down. You have to remember the ultimate goal for this is that we want to have the client anticoagulated enough that they're not forming spontaneous clots or their current clot is not getting larger, but not too anticoagulated that they're bleeding to death. Okay, so if you kind of think about it as like a seesaw or a teeter-totter from the playground in elementary school, you're trying to keep it balanced. So as I mentioned before, you have a bolus and you have an infusion. So when you're doing calculation, you have two types of calculations. The initial, which is going to involve a bolus and an infusion, and then you have ongoing, which is always going to involve an infusion, but may sometimes also involve another bolus. Okay, for calculation standpoint, you need to determine what you're doing you need to look very carefully at your protocol for the amount that you're giving and the concentration of your supply. What you need to keep in mind is that the supply that you use for a bolus and the supply that you use for an infusion are two different things and they have different concentrations. So that is critical when you're doing your math. As I mentioned before, initial dosing requires both a bolus and an infusion. Your ongoing dosing is always going to involve an infusion, but depending on what your numbers are, you may need to repeat a bolus or give a second bolus. Okay. So what you're looking at right now on the screen is the standard adult heparin PTT protocol. Okay, so this protocol adjust the heparin based upon PTT results or APTT results. Okay, so when you look at the protocol, I'm like, wow, there are 15 things in that protocol. There's a lot of extra information there. What do I need right now to actually do the calculation? Okay, so there's five things you always need when you're looking at the protocol. You need to know the client's weight in kilograms. And for heparin infusions only, heparin, adult, that gets rounded to the nearest 10 kilograms. So if they are 86.5 kilograms, that is going to be rounded up to 90 kilograms. Okay, so you need to know how to convert pounds to kilograms and then round appropriately. The second piece of information you need is the bolus order. And it's always written in units per kilogram. Okay, so your bolus order. And in this case, it's in number 10. If you read number 10, it says bolus with 80 units per kilogram. Okay, 
you need to know what the bolus concentration is. What's the supply dosage of the heparin vial? In this particular protocol, you can find that up in number two. Not the first part, but the second part where it says boluses to be given as 1,000 units per milliliter. You'll need the infusion order, which is written in units per kilogram per hour. That is also back down in number 10. We looked at the bolus before, but if you keep reading, it says start drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. And lastly, you need the infusion concentration, which is the supply dosage of the heparin bag. Again, back up in number two, it says heparin, 25,000 units in 250 milliliters of half normal saline. So let's practice. Let's take this protocol and let's put client specifics on there. Doc writes a, a heparin order for a client weighing 180 pounds. They're going to be started on this standard weight-based heparin. So their weight, they're 180 pounds. We're going to convert that to kilograms, which was 81 kilograms. But we round to the nearest 10 kilograms, so that gives me 80 kilograms. My bolus order, which is in number 10 of the protocol, bolus with 80 units per kilogram. So I'm going to take 80 units times 80 kilograms. Okay, that's how I'm going to end up calculating it. But I need to know that it's 80 units per kilogram. I know my bolus concentration is up in number two. Again, bolus is to be given as 1,000 units per milliliter. So I got that right there. My infusion order written in units per kilogram per hour. Back down in number 10, start drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. So I'll end up multiplying when I do my calculation. I will multiply 18 units times 80 kilograms times one hour. And I have my infusion concentration, the supply dosage of the heparin bag. Back up in number two, it says heparin, 25,000 units in 250 milliliters of half normal saline. So let's put everything together. We got that client weight that we already converted and rounded. It's 80, degree, 80 kilograms, okay? I have my bolus order, 80 units per kilogram. My bolus concentration of 1,000 units per milliliter. My infusion order, 18 units per kilogram per hour. And my infusion concentration, 25,000 units per 250 ml. You're going to use your basic standard formula that you learned in foundations, your desired over have times quantity, okay? There's just one extra step. You need to calculate what your desired is, what the D is, okay? So let's look at the bolus, okay? Treat it as two separate problems. I'm dealing with the bolus right now. When I'm done with the bolus, then I'll deal with the infusion. My bolus order says 80 units per kilogram. So I'm taking 80 units multiplied by 80 kilograms and that gives me 6,400 units. Okay, That's my desire. That's what I need to give. I need to give 6,400 units. Once I have that, I just need to plug my numbers in to figure out the rest, to figure out how much I'm pulling up from the vial. Okay, But remember, you need bolus numbers. So I have my desired of 6,400 units divided by my half, which is 1,000 units times my quantity in one milliliter. And when I do that, I get 6.4 milliliters. Now remember your rounding rules, okay? This is a bolus, so it is being pulled up in a syringe, okay? Think about your 10 ml syringe. Can I pull up 6.4 milliliters? You bet I can, right on the dot. So I don't need to do any rounding here. Okay, it's above one milliliter, so it needs to go to the nearest tenth. All right, bolus done. Let's look at the infusion. Again, I got my 80 kilograms. I'm going to skip over my bolus stuff. My infusion order is 18 units per kilogram per hour. My infusion concentration is 25,000 units in 250 milliliters. 
Okay, so same thing as I did before. I just have that one extra step. So my order is 18 units times 80 kilograms times one hour. So when I do that, I end up giving 1,440 units per hour. But remember, your IV pumps are not set in units. They're set in milliliters per hour. So that's what I need to figure out. But I know that I want to give 1,440 units per hour. So let me plug my numbers in. For 1,440 units per hour divided by what I have, 25,000 units in 250 mLs. When I do that math, I end up getting 14.4 milliliters per hour. I know that out in clinical, many of your facilities have smart pumps. And yes, they technically can program in 14.4 milliliters per hour. But as of right now, NCLEX is still using the standard that if it is a pump, it gets rounded to the nearest whole number. So for NCLEX purposes, your correct answer would be 14 milliliters per hour. Okay. So that was the initial thing. I'm starting this heparin on this patient. We calculated the bolus. We calculated the infusion. I spiked and primed the IV bag. I set the pump. I pulled up my bolus in a syringe and I gave it IV push. Okay. Now it's six hours later. Okay. Because if you look at your protocol, it says under number three, we're going to look at a PTT every six hours or six hours after the rate change. And we'll adjust it per the protocol. Okay. The other piece you want to look at is numbers 11 through 15 in the protocol because that's what tells you what to do once you get that APTT result back. Okay, So same client, it's now six hours later and we need to adjust the drip based on an APTT result of 86.7 seconds. Okay. According to number 14 in the protocol, okay, I'm looking at number 14, if my APTT is 76 to 90 seconds, I need to decrease the rate by two units per kilogram per hour. Okay, well, 86.7 falls into that window, so I need to decrease the rate by two units per kilogram per hour. From our previous calculation, we know the client was running at 18 units per kilogram per hour. And when we calculated that out, it was 1,440 units per hour. So if you're going to reduce the rate as prescribed, I'm going to reduce it by two. So instead of 18 units per kilogram per hour, I'm now down to 16 units per kilogram per hour. I'm going to do my math the same way. I'm going to take 16 units multiplied by 80 kilograms multiplied by one hour. And that's where I get the 1,280 units per hour. I'm going to take that because that's what I need to give to the patient. I need to divide and multiply by my supply. So divided by my 25,000 units in 250 milliliters. And when you do the math, it ends up being 12.8 milliliters per hour. Again, based on current NCLEX rounding rules, that's going to go to 13 milliliters per hour. On this last slide, I just wanted to show you this uh, because I mentioned earlier in the PowerPoint that we're going to adjust the heparin drip based upon lab results. And the examples that we worked and the examples that are on your practice problem worksheets all focus on the PTT level. In the past few years, some facilities have begun to look at the uh, factor 10A uh, fractionated level instead of doing the PTT. So I just wanted to show you what that protocol looks like. It still works the same way, okay? You still have in that left-hand column where it shows you what the result would be, and in the right-hand column, it tells you what to do as you're responding. So it's the same concept. The adjustment is just based on a different unit of measure. But I just wanted to show you that so you'd be familiar with it.